Good Sunday morning, everybody. Come on in. It's time to cook Sunday dinner. You guessed it. Oven baked spare ribs. Baby backs at that. So, what I'm getting ready to do here is get these uh, sauced up and get them into the oven because I've already had them marinating overnight with my usual seasoning, my garlic powder, powder, my complete seasoning, onion powder, just a tad of salt, and I believe that's it. I think I named it all. Okay, so what we're going to do right now, we're going to sauce them up with sweet baby rays and y'all know me i put a little bit of extra vinegar a little bit of extra brown sugar in my sweet baby rays it depends on how much you're making but i do it to my taste so you can do it to taste you know how i said it's chef's choice around here and when i'm in my kitchen it's always my choice so if you don't want to add anything else hey that's fine i ain't mad at you we just uh invite you to make you know i tell you all the time make these recipes your own so, my thing is, um, I like my food like I like it, and you like yours like you like it. And if you like yours like I like it, then make it exactly like I do it. So, anyway, I'm just going to drench these really good with this barbecue sauce. And they're going into the oven for about two and a half, three hours, depends. You know, some days seem like your oven baked different than other days. Don't ask me why, it just happens that way. So what you got to do here is just like so. I'm going to use most of this bottle of uh, barbecue sauce. So you get them on the back side and the front side. Because uh, from time to time I'm going to go in there and I'll marinate them up a little bit in between time. So you got that first one done on the back side and on the front side. This, this uh, slab here is a little bit thinner. I think when they cut it, you see how butcher's choice. Depends on how the bush is I'm telling you, when you are a master at your craft, you do it your way. And I guess people go to the store and they buy them if they want to. If they don't want to, they don't have to. So, anywho, y'all. Hope y'all having a God bless Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. Uh, and if you're not already, that you're looking forward to it, the family's going to come on for dinner or something, or you going out for dinner. I know it uh, used to be a while back when we first got here and we had these friends that always like to go out to dinner after church. Well, now, I would go out to dinner with them, but you can cool believe, excuse me a minute, you can, I'm going to take my uh, meat scissors here and I'm going to cut that little flap off back there. So we're going to let it cook separately. But anyway, you can cool believe one thing. If I ate out, you saw me eating out, you better believe one thing. I had dinner at home already cooked either the night before or I got up early Sunday morning. I just always have, even when, um, every once in a while, the rare occasion that we went in, well, Thanksgiving, and that was very rare. Or any holiday for that matter, I had my food at home. Because my children, I have to feed my children. So, um, just... You know what, let's put this off to the side before I have a big old mess going. So these ribs are rubbed down with the sauce. I'm going to go ahead and get them into the oven so that in about two and a half hours they'll be ready for me to cut and get in a serving pan. So I'm going to do it just like so. And I've got a bonus. This is a shallow uh, baking pan that I've got going on here. We just about ready to get these babies in there. Just make sure they're inside the pan now, because you know they're gonna they're gonna secrete a little bit of grease. And just about every uh, about thirty every about thirty minutes in there, just go in there and check them out, and you know put a little bit more sauce on them to keep them going. And you have your good old pan of oven cooked asparagus. And this is how I cook mine. I'm sure y'all got other ways if you like to. When you comment on this video, just share with me. And for something I, you know, see my right, I might jump in there the next time and prepare mine the way that you prepare yours. Who knew? Uh, it's all about uh, caring and sharing. Y'all know I love to share, and I love it when y'all share with me. We're gonna turn this. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this uh, foil up a little bit like that, just in case they decide. Remember how we do with the. Uh, Spaghetti and mac and cheese. We always turn that foil up so in case it wants to bubble over We we'll have something to push it back. Okay, so to speak Okay, I think these are ready to go in. I'm gonna put these in a 375 degree 
convection uh, bake oven, which means that, um, well, which, and for my oven, it means that it bakes all the way around evenly. So, put them in 375. And I believe they even bake a little bit. Well, that was the wrong lid for them to pour a little bit more on that end piece. They bake a little bit hotter than uh, 375, so maybe 400, I don't know. But that's what I'm going to put in on anyway. Let's put me a little extra. And somewhere along the way, I'm going to flip these over and let them bake on the reverse side. Probably after that second 30 minutes, after about an hour, I'll flip them over all the way and just let them bake on the other side. Okay, so the oven is at 375. And these babies are about to go in. And the reason I call them babies is because they are baby back ribs. And I'm also going to put a piece of foil under this pan or another pan under this pan because I don't want, uh, if anything spills over, I don't want it spilling over so I don't have to do an oven clean up, y'all. An ounce of prevention. Okay. This is my little faded rag. It was green, honey. I don't put so much Clorox on this polka dot. So, in the oven, those go. All right. Um, my chicken. I'm going to do some lemon pepper chicken, but I think I'm going to do it in the um, my food ninja. So, I won't have to start those yet because I can get those in under an hour. I'll have those done. So, I can start those later. So, for now, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup, clean my hands up, and I'm going to go again and do my sweet potatoes. I'm doing sweet potatoes. They're going to be agave and honey sweet potatoes with a little bit of butter so we'll be right back okay y'all i'm back get ready to get these uh agave sweet agave and brown sugar sweet potatoes going okay what i'm going to do this is another test kitchen recipe y'all so this is about I'm, i got about four pounds of sweet potatoes i still gotta cut them up i got them all peeled and washed now okay i'll do this figure out what shape I'm going to cut them in. That won't take five minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with, uh, we're going to put a fourth of a cup of agave in there. And we're going to put one cup of, this is for four pounds of sweet potatoes. Now I like mine real sweet. You can back the sugar off if you want to. That's up to you. I'm going to put, uh, this is uh, not butter. This is uh, Smart Star. I'm going to put one cup of Smart Star in there. Go ahead and put that on there. And then I'm going to put, where's my brown sugar? There it is. Because I'm going to put this on the stove and let it heat up and melt down real good. And then I'm going to get everything poured on top of the potatoes. Okay, this is a cup and a half of, of brown sugar. So what we got going so far, a fourth a cup of agave, a cup of butter, and a cup and a half of brown, of, yeah, brown sugar. So, got that much going. They're going to be nice and sweet, but not too sweet. Um, this will be my splurge day. This is my Sunday dinner. It's my splurge Sunday dinner day. And I'm going, well, you know what? I'm going to put a uh, half a teaspoon of salt in there, okay? And uh, I'm going to put, a, I, don't, I don't know why I can't find my nutmeg, but allspice is a good spice to put in sweet potatoes also. So just a, a light dusting, maybe a fourth of a teaspoon of allspice to go in there. And of course I got to do my vanilla flavor, get it going in there couple tablespoons because this is not I didn't I didn't buy the uh, you know the original one I just realized how much but I'll get it next time I just grabbed this one without even thinking about it put a couple of tablespoons because this is not pure vanilla extract so I'll put a couple of tablespoons of vanilla extract in there and then what I'm gonna do with this is go ahead and put it on the stove and let it begin to uh, come to a little bubbling boil. Put it start out on high, then turn it down on low. 
let that melt out real good. And what I'm going to do in the meantime is go ahead and get my potatoes. I've got them already cut up. I'm sorry, already peeled. I haven't cut them up yet. I've got them peeled. So we're going to bring our pan, bring our camera right here. Okay. Again, I hope y'all are having a God-blessed Sunday. And that you got some... Uh, a real good food plan for Sunday dinner. This is like our Martin Luther King celebration Sunday dinner. How about that? So we need to make it just really, 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 really special. I think I'm just going to cut them. They're a pretty good size. Oh, the special thing about these sweet potatoes that I want y'all to know is that these came right out of the ground right here in North Carolina. You know, North Carolina is noted for its sweet potatoes. You know what? Now I think I'm going to cut them like this. I think I'm going to do them just like this. It'll be simpler to do it like this. So we're going to do it just like so. Um, but these were dug up out of the ground by a dear friend. He goes every year and he always brings me, um, this is my husband's best friend. He's always bring, and he still does to this day bring me, um, sweet potatoes and he's a fisherman bless his heart and he fishes and he still gives me a uh, fish because my husband was a fish lover and he always made sure we had plenty of fish and sweet potatoes oh it's starting to boil already okay i don't want to turn it up too high but these sweet potatoes are fresh out of the ground from right here in north carolina and um going to be a lot of potatoes in that pan and I'm going to put these going to go in the oven now when I do yams a lot of times I put them you know you can put them right on top of the stove but today since I got the oven going already we're going to put them you like that that milk too don't you yeah it milk's good I had to talk to Remy to almond milk I had, I, we, here I neither one can do the regular milk anyway and he thought almond milk was I don't know what he called it I think because almond milk has that little What's up? That, that little beige look to it. That's probably all the reason. Almond milk is actually very good. I really love almond milk. You get the original, the almond breeze, I think. Depending on just what. Okay, now. Everything is melted down and ready to pour over these sweet potatoes. Um. Okay, so we just continue to get our potatoes cut up in there. Get them going. Okay. And just arrange them in there like so. Okay. This wouldn't pass uh, one of those cooking shows because they want them all the same size, a certain shape, and all that kind of good stuff. They eat just the same. They're easy to cut like this too. I'm going to put that away. So, um, anyway, like I was saying about the sweet potatoes, uh, my friend uh, makes sure that we have every year, he makes sure, and I mean, you talk about digging sweet potatoes, he'll have like buckets and barrels of these things. And what the other unique thing about these sweet potatoes, after the farmers are done harvesting their sweet potatoes, they allow, you know, people in town to just come, and pick potatoes and they are so and look at these beautiful sweet potatoes they are fresh they are awesome and they just allow you know like I said the town people just come and people anybody that has a truck or you know some buckets and can pick them get you know get out there and dig them up out of the ground and he just digs a lot of them and the good the other good thing about he shares his with so many different people and I, I thank God for that now long 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 time ago I went and my husband and I went out with him and his wife and we all four of us got out there and dug sweet potatoes. We used to do that kind of stuff. We'd go and dig sweet potatoes and pick blueberries and pick strawberries and stuff like that. Can't do it no more though. And uh, but my friend, I thank God for him. I said, we all getting up in age now so it's kind of difficult to do those things but nonetheless this year wasn't a year that he couldn't get out there and do it so uh bless his heart he's been under weather a little bit so we just praying his strength in the lord like i say there is always 
always, always, always something that uh, we can pray about. I'm serious. We can always pray about something. Even if we just pray, Lord, that this is a great day for everybody that I know. And how about the people that don't really even know, the people that I'm going to know. Just pray uh, their strength in you, God, that they uh, have good health and good fortune. And that their lives are blessed according to your riches and glory. So that's what I always try to pray every day. So that's why I say the, the that's why the you know pray without ceasing. Always, always, always something to pray about. Okay. I think that's enough potatoes. And now I've got one small one left. So this is as much as this pan is gonna hold. And of course you know as these cook they'll they'll go down a lot. And of course, I'm going to put these into the oven without a lid. Um, you know what? I think I can get that last. This is a small one. I think I can get it. I'm going to have to turn up the sides on these so they won't spill over. And you know, pork and sweet potatoes are just wonderful together. And like I said, this will be my splurge meal today. And for no more than I eat, it won't even matter. Okay, so I'll cut these like that. Uh, thank y'all for continuing to, you know, be concerned about my health. I am doing well. I uh, am still having to watch it because I'm still going through this sciatic nerve thing. But, you know, I told the kids, you know, they, they want me to just sit, 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 sit. I said, well, you know what? When I sit a long time, my sciatic nerve really bothers me, y'all, so... It hurts if I sit, it hurts if I stand, it hurts if I lay down. So until they get me going in the right direction with this little sciatic nerve situation, I'm just going to keep chug-a-lugging because I am more, um, I'm tuned into, you know, keeping myself straight as far as my heart is concerned. That That's the major thing. So, you know, as ironic as it sounds, my heart keeps me distracted from, uh, Caring a whole lot about what's going on with my back, even though I know I have to, you know, be sensible about that as well. Uh, again, for anybody that's had side of nerve problem, you know it's not a cakewalk either. So, but I am doing very well. I'm so thankful that I was able to make the trip to Atlanta last week. That was just a real true blessing. Now. Okay. I think now <clears throat> my syrup I'm just gonna get ready <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring it over the sweet potatoes okay let's pour it right over 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 okay those are going to be so good, y'all. Y'all know what yams taste like. Good yams. You have to make the, um, you know, the way you season them up, of course, it dictates what they taste like. Y'all know that. So we got them all in the pan. And, you know, they're going to put off a little bit more juice of their own as they cook. So right now, they're not covered, but every last one. I had one of those um, food syringes, and I don't know what in the world happened to it. I think Norik, when he was getting into everything, when he was two, that boy was a pistol. Good grace of life, Norik was a pistol. Uh, he got hold of that. He got hold of my wild whisk. <laughs> He's a cute little thing. I mean, he is growing up, y'all. Y'all seen him. I've got to get his little face back on here because he is growing up. He is the most handsome little thing. And just so much personality, and, you know, just, I mean, just, just a little card, just like the rest of my boys. Oh, Lord, I wish, and I, I don't know how I did not have them, but, you know, we, we were in a funeral setting. The My son that just passed away, he has four boys and one daughter, and there was just boys everywhere. Boys everywhere. I think all these boys, I, I love it. I really do. So, we're about ready to get these going into the oven. 
so we can get them cooking because they need to cook a couple hours too. A couple hours. Okay, so everything is ready to go into the oven. And the only other thing I'm going to do to these potatoes, I'm going to hit them with another little sprinkle of, um, another little sprinkle of, uh, brown sugar. Because these are going to go in the oven and they're just going to cook until they get done. Okay. I'm just going to do this just to sprinkle them. Okay. And you do this. This is chef's choice. I mean, this is just, this is me. Y'all know I'm extra. Y'all know I'm extra. So, just hit them with this um, extra little sprinkles here. Okay, I'll get that going. Oh, and by the way, I, I think I mentioned to y'all uh, about I was buying these stools so I could put them in the kitchen so I could have something to sit on. So I bought, I went to my favorite antique shop, and Lord knows she had those stools sitting down there, and I purchased them. So I, yesterday I purchased some um, upholstery fabric. I'll have to show it to y'all. But I'm going to eventually get these two. I'm using them now. I just cover them with a towel until I get them covered. But they're not in bad shape. I just want a different fabric on them. So I bought me some beautiful fabric uh, to cover them with. So let's get these potatoes into the oven. And we can move on to the next thing on the menu. Okay. Let me get my stew back out of the way. Okay. Okay, now, these potatoes, I'm going to put them on a lower level. Okay. I think they'll fit on that next level. So, let's get them into the oven. Yeah, that Hey y'all, got my sweet potatoes in and I got my ribs into the oven. So, the next thing I'm going to work on is I'm going to do some collard greens. So, I need to get those collards. Now, I've got some already cooked and I've got another bag that I'm going to cook and put them together. So, hold on. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all. Here we go. We get ready to put these collards in. These are some shredded collards. I went ahead and rinsed them off real good. They say they're triple washed, but I rinsed them anyway. So, I went ahead and rinsed them off. I'm going to season up uh, some about three cups or four cups of water in my pot. This is just one bag because I've got some already cooked collards and kale that I'm going to add to this. So I'm going to add a tablespoon of lemon pepper season to it. I had uh, four tablespoons of, of um, smart start margarine and um, that's going to suffice for the salt. I'm not going to put any more salt in them except I'm going to put a little bit of this rice jollof. I love this seasoning here. It's real good. It has a little bit of a kick to it, so we're just going to put a little bit in there, and we're going to start adding these collars. This is a lot of collars. See why. Anyway, into the pot they go. What y'all hear in the background screaming, that's not my kids. That is uh, Bring It. I like that TV show, Bring It. Finally start coming back on Hulu again, so I'm watching it again. That's what me, Lauren, and Tania used to watch. Every Friday night, they would come over for whatever year it first came out. It was real popular. And then when it got real, real popular, you know, you start having to pay to see it. So Hulu, I guess, bought it and put it on their network. So I'm watching Bring It Again. I love, love, love it. Those people, those young women have uh, gone so far. They travel all over the world. They're worldwide now. So I am so excited and proud of them and glad for them. So let me get the lid for this because I'm getting ready to cover these collards. And they're going to cook for a good hour. And then I'll add my already cooked collards in. So when you see these again, they will be a different color green mix in with that um, kale and collards from uh, last week. And uh, we'll be ready to put them on the flavor train here shortly. Next thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and get my rice ready because I'm going to make a stir fried rice with turkey meat and we'll, I'll show you how to do that in just a few okay we're gonna whip up a pan of cornbread right quick y'all okay two cups of uh, house archery self-rising yellow meal two eggs um, 
a fourth of a cup of, of sugar or brown sugar or none if you don't want any in yours and a cup of um, about a, a little over a cup of milk let me see I, I put a half a cup so about three-fourths of a cup of milk you'll know when it's there that was all my milk I just poured in there whip it up real good uh, did I say three-fourths of a cup of uh, butter margarine corn oil whatever you I put uh, today because I love 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 olive oil I put olive oil in mine so any kind of oil three-fourths of a cup of oil in there and get it to about this consistency get it whipped up real good you don't have to beat it like you do cake batter but basically you can do uh, this cornbread according to now the house archery I know and of course you make sure you spray that pan real good I got it greased and sprayed real good so, um, make sure it comes out okay. About that thickness, okay? My family likes that sweet cake cornbread, so that's why I put the sugar in. So you don't have to if you don't want to. Let's see. <clears throat> I'm going to give them a good treat today. I'm going to put a little honey in there. Hmm. About a tablespoon of honey. That just kick it up another notch, y'all. That's all. Things like this you do at your leisure. Cook's choice. Okay, I'm moving out of frame. So all I'm going to do next is just pour that into the pan, bake it for 25 minutes, and it's cornbread. Be right back. Okay, y'all, it's time to do my um, ground turkey fried rice with veggies. I'm getting ready to do this thing a lot. Okay, hold on just a minute. I don't know what in the world. I'm trying to multitask. You know, sometimes when you multitask, you get you, you get some stuff going in the wrong direction. So those calls are smoking, y'all. I mean, they are smoking. That was a lot of car. I mean, I meant to look at that particular brand. That's a different brand. I hadn't tried that brand before. But that's a different brand. And they seem to be a bigger bag. So, what I'm going to start with is get my veggies going. And when I say veggies, I mean my... Uh, I chop a large onion and a large green pepper. So, I got my green pepper and my onion chopped. I'm going to go ahead and get it in a sizzling hot pan. Make sure that pan is real good and hot. Um, before you put it in. There goes my peppers. Okay. Everything is hot. Hot, hot. I'm going to just let them sizzle there for a minute or two before I throw in my uh, ground turkey. So hit them with a little bit of garlic. Oh, by the way, I, I got some uh, olive oil in the pan. I don't think I put enough. Let me go ahead and put another couple of tablespoons. If you know, um, turkey meat does not have any oil or anything, so you have to go ahead and um, get it going. I'm going to get these uh, veggies with just a little bit of uh, gold mountain cheese. Somebody asked me the other day where I get that Gold Mountain season from. We have a nice Asian market here that sells uh, all kinds of um, Asian cuisine uh, food and seasoning. I'm just going to hit it with just a little bit of that jollof seasoning because, you know, like I said, I like for each one of my ingredients to stand on its own as far as seasoning is concerned. So we hit it with that so those onions and those peppers will even have their own little flavor. I'm going to let them get about halfway through because, you know, um, ground turkey does not take that long to cook. So, uh, it just took another minute, and I've got one pound of ground turkey is what I'm putting into here. And I'd like to say, I got this heat on high, high, high. Keep it on high. Because we want it to, uh, we don't want a lot of condensation in the pan, in other words. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and drop my ground turkey in there. Full line bread ground turkey. I'm going to go ahead and drop it in there. And as it's browning or cooking, 
I'm gonna go ahead and start putting my seasoning in it as well. I'm gonna hit it with my garlic powder. Nice little bit of garlic powder in there. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of soy sauce. Y'all know I don't use a lot of soy, but I'm gonna use a little bit here today. Just to get my meat seasoned up. And then I'm gonna use, uh, I got some uh, saffron, because you know, they say add a little magic, and you can do it with the saffron. So I'm going to put about a half a pack of that saffron in there. And then the other half will go into my uh, veggies. Okay, so we got that going. We just want to get this going here. And can y'all see me here? If I can get the camera a little closer in, I want y'all to be able to see what this meat's doing. I can't move it any closer. I don't. Want, I don't like my camera getting too close to the, to the stove, and I have to keep it on that big burner. So we're gonna have us a nice big pan of uh, fried up rice here, y'all. I love saffron rice. This makes a good saffron rice uh, mixture. So I'm just gonna let that sit there. And just cook until it all get, all that gets done. Cause when I add the rice in, it's just a matter of mixing it, y'all. I'm gonna put a little bit of my. This is my combination of everything I had in the cabinet. So I'm gonna pour a little of that because I want most of it to go in when I put the rice in. And you know, uh, I love my masala season, but it has a little bit of a kick to it. And I'm not going to do it today because I got company coming and I don't know if they can deal with it. Uh, I don't know if they got them with baby tongues or not. I forgot. Anyway, one of the people that's coming is one of my adopted daughters that I've known for the last ooh, 25 years. She once upon a time was stationed here and would live here. In fact, she was in the military, so was my husband. So they retired and they moved to Atlanta with their two girls. One of their girls is in the military and now the other one's in college. I mean, people, these children grow up so fast now, and I can't keep up with it. But anyway, uh, she had, she's an interior designer now. Uh, I'm sure Tanya will show y'all all about it on her channel, but I'm so excited for her. She's in real estate and interior design. I wish I knew the name of her company, but we, we, in, in times to come, but we'll get that to you. So if y'all need a real good interior designer, my, my baby girl is not an interior designer. And I'm excited for her. So excited for her. So we're going to cheer her on. Get her out there. Uh, where she can go ahead on and do her thing. Um, so she, she and Tanya are hooking up this weekend. I'm so excited. So I'm doing dinner. So that she can come over and eat. Don't you just feel good when your children or people that you know make it well make it do well i do i mean i love it especially young folks i love to see young folks succeed and get that train moving forward and i mean she got that train moving forward they have a beautiful home in atlanta they love my husband so much they they had uh when they, my husband was alive when they first moved to atlanta and we promised to go visit him. And he passed away before we could both of us. So I went right after he passed. And they dedicate a, a, a big, beautiful room, honey. It was like a, whew, I thought, all right, man. It was, it was going to be always, because they call it our room. And they got some things in there that are commemorative to the relationship uh, with him. So it's just so nice and people love me. Like I say, give me my flowers while I'm on this side. Yeah. I was talking about that to somebody just, in fact, this week. Um, like once a person passes away, on it's way too late. Man. You have gone past the mark. It's too late. Okay. I'm going to lower the heat a little bit now because all these veggies and this meat is done. 
And what I want to be doing next is adding in the rice so we can lower the heat on it now. It's not a fat. So the heat is lowered. And I'm just going to let it sit there and just do what it do. And then we'll add the rice and put the rest of the ingredients in. Remember, this is just a pound of ground turkey, one large onion, one large green pepper, chopped up, sauteed into that meat, seasoned up real good. And you know, of course, you already cooked your rice. I had already cooked my rice over here, even though I didn't cook it as far enough as I intended to. You want that rice to be as separated as possible so that it doesn't get gummy on you, and I don't think it will. And if it does get a little bit gummy on you, put you a little bit extra oil in there. That oil will help to separate it. Okay. And that may be what I'll have to do. Because I didn't get a chance to um because if you wash it and put it in there, it's gonna be have you know the water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the rice in gradually and get it stirred and mixed and separated real good. I'm not gonna dump it all in at one time and the reason I'm having to do it that way is simply because I did not um I should have cooked that rice like this morning and let it sit or wash it. I don't want to wash it now. It's just, I, you know, it's just, I just can't wash it right now. You know, rinse it rather. So what we're going to do is it's still steaming, but I'm going to show you how to do it so you don't have to worry about waiting two hours. So, got it in here. And what I'm going to do is just add it gradually to the meat okay and what I can actually do is I'm gonna switch sides here yeah yeah let me just switch sides right there yeah we can go ahead and push the camera back we can switch sides okay that's what we're gonna do get a little water in that pan don't want it burning I don't want that rice cooking either so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this much at a time and go ahead and let me go ahead and get my uh, other spoon, my rubber spoon, so, so the, uh, the scraping on the pan won't bother my children who said get on their nerves to hear that metal hit metal. That doesn't bother me. I told somebody the other day, they said, hey, I don't understand how you do it. And I said, do what? They said, you know, how you be around even when you don't feel well. How you're able to be around a lot of folk and just keep right on moving. Well, for one thing, I grew up in a pretty good sized family, huh? You weren't gonna move nowhere but from the front room to the back room, and then between the back room was only one room, so you could, you didn't have too many places to move to. So I learned a long time ago how to deal with people and do what I need to do to be around people. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna put another half pack of saffron in there. We're halfway there, guys. The rice is doing fine. It's, it's not overcooked. It's just that it was not cooled off. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do to it to make sure that it stays separate, I'm going to put a little bit of um, what do you call it? Smart Start in. Smart Start will give it that oil that it needs. You know, Smart Start has some oil, not a lot. It's heart healthy. So we're just going to go ahead and put that much Smart Start in there. 